I was going to start by saying art is not a distraction. But actually, while making One Mile Away, I reread my quite vast selection um, collection of P.G. Woodhouse. So sometimes art as a distraction, as a consolation, as a familiar pleasure, is also a wonderful thing. But art can be more visceral than that. And in this case, I was privileged to be part of something which not just reflected the reality of the world that we're in, but actually changed it as well. And it's a, a long journey, and we've known each other for quite some time. I've known um, Dylan and Simba since 2007, and we're family now. We fight like family, and we love each other like family. We're involved in trying to do something, and art is right at the centre of it. Because in 2007, I went to Birmingham, and I researched a fiction film, which became One Day, which Dylan uh, starred in at that point. Zimmer was convinced that I must be police because he hadn't met any artists. But as an artist, I was able to go in and speak to people and do things in a way that people who are part of institutions very often can't. I can hear conversations, I can be part of things, I can hang around, I don't have to obey any rules. In fact, I think the, the role of an artist is really to break them. So I researched one day and then made the film, and two years later, I think, from making the film, I got a phone call from Shaba, who we saw in the film, asking me whether I would help him to see whether or not we could bring some peace between the, the two gangs who'd been fighting each other for 20 years. And he asked me, because I was the only person he knew who knew people on both sides who wasn't part of any kind of institution. And I called Dylan. Well, I got this phone call from Penny. Well, like Penny was saying, she met me in 2007. Well, in 2006, I was in jail for a month, and I was sitting there thinking, I need to change my life. I need to do something different. And my mom's cousin, my uncle Vanley, he does photography, introduced me to Penny. So from that there, it, it kind of, we've had a relationship. But me going into like the art world and trying to change my, like, change my way of living, it's been a difficult, difficult road. Like I said, through one day, it kind of made me into a role model. I had loads of little kids looking at me thinking, yo, you've made a film, you're this kind of guy, but they was listening to me. So when I got the phone call from Penny telling me that Shab wanted to make change in my community, I was up for it. So when I got this phone call and I was thinking, oh, so how are we gonna do this? This is gonna be difficult. A lot of people ain't gonna like this. This could put problems on us. This is gonna bring problems to us and our families. But at the end of the day, we have to give a positive message and tell them something constructive because they're all looking at us, they're all watching us. So. In, what was it 2010 that we started filming? Was it, yeah. yeah, 2010 when we started filming the film, it was hell. To tell the truth, nobody was supporting us. Everybody was saying, what are you doing? How are you trying to change our culture? How are you trying to change what we've grown up to believe in? And that's what really this is about though. If I'm in a good position, I'm in a position to change things, I should stand up and try and make a difference in my community. But my community wasn't really happy with it. So it took years and years, we took it till, till, till now to this point, we're still struggling and going through. Like I said, I get death threats. I get people telling me they're going to do this to me. Like I said, while I was making a film, my mother's house, windows are smashed up. But like I said, we have to stand up as people and try and change our place in it. And this is what art does. We can make change, social change with art. Like I said, coming from Hansworth, Burning, and we don't really... Well, there's other people that come from Burning that are in the art world, but there's no people in our community that we can look up to and say, OK, I know this guy, and this guy's doing film, this guy's doing television, this guy's out there doing these kind of arts. Like, there was nobody there, so when I got that position, I thought, you know something, let me do something positive with this position and try and make a social change in my community. And that's what art has done for me. And Zimbo, who, a bit like in, in the film where the guy's dancing, he was one of the first people when it was just Dylan and, and um, Shaba and me, we were the lone nuts. And then it was really Zimbo, who's somebody who has authority when he's a sort of, he's a ghetto celebrity. So his videos on YouTube, which were at that point about banging guns and selling drugs, were getting 100,000, 200,000 hits from people who were listening to him with that message. Where I was all over him like a rash trying to persuade him to join us. And when I, when we managed to have that conversation, it's made a massive difference. Um. Well, should I say why well, I got involved first? Okay, so the, well, the, the reason the reason why I was against it is because I just didn't feel like the war between Burger Bar and Johnsons 
was our problem. I, I saw it as a symptom of our problem. Now, I know what our real problems are, and our real problems are a lifestyle, our whole way of living, the way we, our whole mindset. So I spoke to Penny and I said, if we're going to deal with the real issues, I'll, I'm all up for it. If, if we're only dealing with gangs and truths and peace, I just know it's another one of them things that have come before. Now, in terms of arts, yeah, I actually do believe uh, the arts are the most powerful tool for social change. And the best, the best way for me to describe it is it's happened already. In the early 80s, I mean, in, in the early 90s, before the early 90s then, in our community, it, the, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was a lot of pro-black, a lot of togetherness. The clothes that people, the colours that people used to wear were like red, gold, and green, which is the, the, it was an Ethiopian flag. So it was a, it was a lot of black empowerment in our community. And then in the early 90s came films like Boys in the Hood, New Jack City, Menace to Society. Then we had NWA, Snoop Dogg, and and all the and all these things were pushing a gangster lifestyle, selling drugs shooting guns, it was okay to call other black brothers nigger. Before then, it, wouldn't, it, it wasn't okay to call, call anyone a, a nigger, but the, the music and the films have made it okay for, the, for the, all these things to happen. So that just goes to show how powerful the arts are. Now, what we should really, really, really be using those same tools that created this whole lifestyle and this whole way of living to change what came about. So we need to be bringing, we need to be using the tools to bring a whole new way of life. And we are, we're actually doing that. We are actually doing that, it's happening. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a little song, and it's called Change the World. Okay. Just remember, the arts are the most powerful tool for social change. We need to be using it for the right reason. Okay. If I could change the world, we wouldn't get harassed by cops There'll be no guns, no nine, no clocks No hidden agenda for them government officials But I can't see that change and let me bring back the pistol Wouldn't be a war between Muslim or Christian Just a thug with nature And there ain't no thugs in prison No rich or poor just can't be living If I could change the world, nobody will be hungry no more murdering, drugs don't circulate We grows like grass, but burn us to burn away Niggas are never bitches, bitches are never girls Every man that cheat his missus, right? If I could change the world Right, and sick and nice like birds, like I have no meaning Took the energy to be with, no teaching There's enough to go around the village If I could change the world, here's what I'd change it If I could change the world Okay, thank you. 